אז הרצתי סקר קטן לפני שהתחלנו את הקורס וראיתי שהקהל הוא יותר רחב ממה שחשבתי, חשבתי שהוא פה רק תיאורטיקנים, כאילו קומפלקסט תיאורטי וולט, וזה לא המצב, אז זה ביחד עם המלחמה גרמה לי קצת לשנות את הקורס, לעשות לו יותר בסיסי, לא פחות טוב, יותר בסיסי, בסיס מעניין. אז אנחנו נלמד על, הנושאים שאנחנו נלמד זה טיירויזינג, סודו הנומרימיטיבס הבסיסיים שאני אסביר מה זה וכולי, אבל השמו, אתה היילה, כאילו היילה את זה, ה-Kways Dependence, Mobile Assets, Expanders, Randomization, Bound Computation, דברים שתכף נדבר עליהם לאט לאט, אבל אני לא רוצה לעשות את זה ככה, אני רוצה שאנחנו נבנה את זה. אז בשתי ההרצאות הראשונות אני אתן יחסית כזה מבט מלמעלה כל התחום, קצת ניכנס כזה כדי להרגיש איך נראות הוכחות בכל דבר, אבל לא עמוק ולא רחב מדי, רק קצת ניגש לזה. ובפועל רק עוד שלושה שבועות מעכשיו נתחיל חומר שהוא באמת אה, פורמלי יותר טכני קצת. לא פחות מעניין, אבל יותר אה, גם לא כאילו פחות מלמעלה. אה, והדבר הראשון שאני רוצה לדבר עליו, כאילו, כמו סגורים, סודו אקראיות, אה, אז נראה לי, כאילו, סודו אקראיות, טוב שם כזה. או סודו, אז אקראי, אז בניגוד לקורסים רגילים, אלגברה לינארית, אף אחד לא בא עם איזושהי הרגשה מה זה אלגברה לינארית לפני שהוא לוקח את הקורס, ופחות או יותר לכולם יש איזושהי תפיסה כזו או אחרת של מה זה אקראיות, ואפשר להתפלסף פה שעות על מה זה אקראיות, ואם זה קיים, וכן, הבנתי, יש איזה עניין וכולי וכולי, ואנחנו קצת נעשה את כל זה, אבל אני רוצה רק להדגיש אה, את שני הפנים שלי אכפת מהקריות אה, במתמטיקה ובחישוב. אני רוצה לדבר על איך הקריות נכנסת במתמטיקה ואיך היא נכנסת בחישוב, פחות או יותר השבוע נעשה את זה. אה, וגם זה, הקריות נכנסת במתמטיקה בשני אופנים. אה, אני רוצה להדגיש את הדבר הראשון, מה שאני רוצה להראות קודם כל זה איך אקראיות נכנסת כדי לאפשר לנו להוכיח טענות מתמטיות ואחרי זה אני רוצה לדבר על איך אקראיות פשוט נמצאת במתמטיקה, בלי שום קשר למקום שיחי משהו. אוקיי, אז בואו נדבר קודם כל על אקראיות לצורך הוכחה. יש מישהו מכיר את השם של הדבר הזה? אולי? שיטה הסתברות עקבית. אז השם החוף של זה זה שיטה הסתברות זה פרובליסטיק מפורד, לא יחסוך אנגלית, ואני רוצה להדגים את זה, ואני יודע שהרבה ראו את זה, אבל יש דוגמה אחת שאני לא, לא מכיר אף אחד שק, היא מאוד יפה, אז אני רוצה להדגים אותה עליה, אז הנה בעיה, שאני גם לא קשורה למדעי המחשב, זהו, רוב הקורס הזה, אז מי שמוביל לכם מעגל, והוא, מתחיל לצבוע את המעגל, מעגל, בחול ואדום, בכזה שלטות של כחול ואדום. נותן קצת כחול, פה, נקל לעצמנו את זה ככה, וקצת בלי, בלי שטויות של תורת המידע, מספר סופי של קשתות, סופי, שזה גם כללי, של כחול ואדום. וההבטחה היחידה זה שיש יותר כחול מהנוער. נכון. כן. יותר מקטעים או יותר... יש יותר, לא, נכון. יותר, כן. יותר, לא שטח, יותר אורך. של כחול מהנוער. בדיוק. סך האורכים יותר כחול. כאילו האורך... זה מהכחול שהוא השתמש בו, כאילו, הוא יותר גדול. נכנס לי כפה לברוך עכשיו. מהאורך האדום. זה סטריקלי יותר גדול. ועכשיו הוא משחק את המשחק הבא, אנחנו שמים ריבוע שבדיוק כאילו במרכז של המעגל והארבע קודקודים שלנו מגיעים בדיוק על המעגל ואפשר לסובב אותו, בנוי כזה כמו... אתה מכיר את זה? כן, זו הדוגמה היחידה שהיא הכי יפה שלא מכירים, כאילו איך שהוא... אולי עכשיו. ומה שאתם רוצים להוכיח זה שיש דרך לסובב את הריבוע הזה ככה שלפחות שלושה קודקודים יגעו בכחול. זה הגיוני, יש כחול, אז איך שאתם אומרים, אני צריך לעשות את זה. אם אתם ממש עקשנים, אפשר להוכיח את זה 
עדיין, בלי שתי סרוטים, זה לא... עשינו את זה, אבל זה לא כיף. ובואו נראה לכם איך הוכחה של השיטה האיכותית. אבל כן, שוב, הבעיה היא שאנחנו רוצים לסיים את הדיבור הזה, כי אנחנו שלושה כתבונים לפחות, סיבורים. וגם שימו לב שאי אפשר ארבעה, כי תמיד יכול להיות מצב ש... כמעט חצי חצי כזה... מה עשו? שלושה זה הכי טוב שם. אז הנה הפתרון, לפני ההסתובבים. אז מה שאנחנו נעשה, אנחנו... יש פה איזשהו... אני לא רוצה להיכנס תמיד, אני חושב שאני אבל יש פה איזשהו מרחב הסתברות מאוד ברור שזה כאילו הזווית שבה אנחנו מסתובבים את הריבוע זה בין 0 ל-2 פאי כזה מיץ 90 איך שאתם אוהבים ומה שאנחנו, לאן מרחב ההסתברות הזה אפשר להגדיר ארבעה משתנים מקריים זה נקרא לו תפקודים בשבוע ואז אפשר לכל אחד לתת משתנה מקרי שאומר נגיד 1 אם הוא כחול ו-0 אם הוא אדום נגדיר xi להיות אחד או אפס, וזה אחד עם קוד איי, איי ו-1-2. בואו, מה שיקרה, אנחנו נעשה שום דבר ונוכח את זה. ומה אתם יכולים להגיד לי על התוחלת של איקס איי, כל איי? גדול מחצי, נכון? סטריקלי גדול מחצי, אני חושב שזה כחול מאדום, אז זה אחד כחול. ומה אתם יכולים להגיד לי על מה המשתנה הזה עושה? כאילו, מה זה הדבר הזה? בדיוק, כמה כחולים יש. זה מה שאני רוצה להוכיח, ש... אני רוצה לדבר על הכמות הזאת, לא בהתפלגות או משהו. אז אם ניקח את התוחלת של הדבר הזה שאכפת לנו, שזה כאילו כמה עוד כחולים כחולים, נקרא לזה כחולים כחולים. יש, דברים שמגיעים לכל, אז מלינאריות התוחלת, זה התוחלת של כל אחד מהם, והסכום של התוחלות שלהם, נפרד. זה כאילו טריוויאלי, אבל סופר חזק, פה בשוויון הקטן הזה להסתכל משהו מאוד חזק, זה טריוויאלי. ואז כל אחד מהם גדול מחצי, אז הדבר הזה גדול מחצי כפול ארבע, שזה בשתיים, גדול ממש בשתיים. והמספר הזה הוא שלם, אז זה אומר, שאוקיי, זה אומר, אבל זה לא אומר שתוחלת היא שלוש ומעלה, אבל זה אומר שיש נקודה במרחב ההסתברות, במרחב ההסתברות הזה, שהיא מקבלת לפחות מהממוצע, יותר משתיים, אבל זה שלם, אז שלוש, או ארבע. אז מה קרה פה? כן, זה מאוד מטריד. אני לא זוכר הרבה דברים מלפני חמש שנה, אבל אני זוכר שראיתי את זה. אני לא זוכר את הקונטקסט, אני לא זוכר מה אכלתי, אני לא זוכר את זה, וזה הטריד, זה הפריע לי מאוד, רון הוטמן נראה את זה בטכניון, מה שהפריע לי זה שהבנתי הכל, ולא הבנתי כאילו מה קרה. אבל אני מרגיש כאילו, יש את הכלים האלה שהם אתגרים, גדול מהם, זה הדבר הכי טמבו. ואז הוא אומר שאני לא מבין להשתמש בדברים הכי בסיסיים, לא מאמין. והנקודה עם מה שקרה, בואו נתן כאן, מפלסיפים על זה קצת, זה שהסכום של המשתנים האלה, הוא בעצם, הסכום הזה הוא תפס את הצביעה, כן? הוא תפס את הקשר, את הצביעה, את הקורלציות ביניהם. וכל אחד מהמשתנים האלה בפני עצמו הוא לא תפס שום דבר לגבי הצביעה חוץ מזה. אז איכשהו המעבר הזה ממשהו מאוד מורכב למשהו מאוד פשוט, הוא עושה את העבודה. בגלל שאכפת לנו רק מהתוחלת, ולא נגיד מומנטים גבוהים יותר או איזשהו מידע נוסף, אז מסתבר שאם אתם, כל מה שאתם רוצים לדעת זה את זה, אז יש לנו את המרג'ינלי כאילו מספיק. בואו נחזיר. או, אוקיי. אוקיי. אוקיי, so that's, that's the formalistic method. It's actually not a typical way of using the formalistic method, that's the guy. Untypical, untypical example, but it's really, really nice. Um, so, but, any questions about that? Like, a, lot of, a lot has happened here. We used probability in a question where there is no probability in, altogether, and somehow it completely simulated the because of like, this very simple expectation. Yeah. The summation switch. So, yeah, we integral it. 
And still, you know, you, you can see it's like, I think you can see it, if you can appreciate it, it's really strong. And you, you can actually prove it like in a brute force manner. You can kind of start doing case study, case analysis and stuff like that, but it's really difficult to prove it otherwise. <laughs> We're only looking at this. So where where do we see like the, the variables are in? Right. So you actually saw the more general problem, but in the in the in the square, you this actually holds. Okay. The only the only thing you want you care about really is that this will be the thing you're interested in. So in the square, this. Fine, and then the marginals are larger than one half. You can this actually solves the harder problem. That's the thing for two seconds. Okay, so so this probabilistic method, and actually the whole um probabilistic way of thinking is a uh, is well, it's not new, but it's not that old. Like for us it's new because under this is old, but for science and mathematics, it's, it's new, comparably new. So, for example, uh, actually, not example. So, the origins of the probabilistic method are uh, due to two like giants. Erdes, uh, we do this, and Shannon. I guess you hold the fifth one of them. Probably two. This is Erdes. I don't know. I don't know yet. I think the father of Mentorix is a and a channel, which is like the, the literally the final form of In both of them, at around the same time, 40 something, 80 years ago, uh, actually used the probabilistic method to prove the existence of things. We actually show both of them. Uh, in this case, it was a large enough, and in that case, it was called. And yeah, these were the four instances of the monolithic method around the same time, which is here. Doesn't make sense. And then the functionality uh, of the So, really, what happened was that uh, I don't know. Well, people understood what happened is that randomness kind of influenced everything around the time because the height. Uh, so, quantum was the key. A driving force there, but even before you can think of like doubling evolution because like randomness comes into the way light is evolved. Um, and ten years before, even though it doesn't doesn't seem to make sense, probability probability theory was actually defined in axiomatics. So like the forties or not much after the thirties, in which Kolmogorov actually defined. Thematics fitting uh, the probabilistic way the theory. So, you know, it was there, and then it happened to be the case that these two giants figured out how to use it. Um, so, let me give you, let, let's talk, and that actually does relate to science, about numbers. Again, please ask questions, even if it's not. Yeah, so we can start from here. So Ramsey, this is what I started to write here. Yeah, okay. Ramsey is another, would have been like super mathematical giant, and he, he is, but he died at like 26. Yeah. But still, right? Uh, uh, so what, do you, do you, did you ever count the Ramsey does? So anyone that wasn't forced. <laughs> I mean, if you if you study commando, it's soon another than ever you see it. And uh, and Ramsey class, Ramsey, which Ramsey actually didn't talk about at all. I think it was like eight late eight twenties. I'm not sure. Um, uh, he has a fake in logic. 
But still, uh, the ideas there, uh, you, know, you, you, can, you can express them in terms of graphs, so of the graphs. So what is the Ramsey graph? And then again, what is the philosophy underlying it? So Ramsey graph, so we are talking about undirected graphs. On, Say on n vertices, n will always be the number of vertices. Uh, it's said to be k Ramsey. So you can all of this on the notes. So there is a problem with k here. If a g contains, let's see if I can make the logical wording correct. No thick I uh, hope this is going to understand me an independent set of a no and independent set of size k. So that's that's a Ramsey graph, the graph that somehow, you know, for some power k, doesn't have, doesn't contain the core independent set of matrix by size. And by contain, I mean no induced graph uh, has this model. So if you take any subset of the vertices size k and you look at the induced graph, the graph you see connecting the edges of the original graph. These vertices, uh, projected to these vertices, then uh, not all edges will appear and some edges will. So the philosophy around this uh, kind of problem is that uh, you can think of G as a large system which was not designed in any way, a chaotic system, G could be anything. And uh, like an independent set, you can think of them as extreme cases of structure. Everything is there or nothing. You think of other structures. That's really all in the context of that. And what Ramsey said in the is if, uh, can we avoid structure? Or more, more precisely, to what extent can we avoid structure? So, what Ramsey for, and again, it's not there, you can check it. It's there. Uh, it's a kind of, so it didn't prove it, so, but it's not even the feeling, it's a corollary of the feeling, which it didn't prove, but it's, we actually did it in like, if not one, apologies for it, uh, is that, um, in, okay. so no graph is J equals alpha of M. The base two on Z. So no doubt, and then the so that means that like any graph that you give me, if I'm looking at windows of size half again, just you know, source something increases the value. Uh, then I will find no matter how how hard you try to avoid it. I will be able to find either a thick or independent set. I can't find both because maybe the entire graph is, but I can find one of them. So you cannot avoid structure. This is a clean instantiation of, you know, when you look at the stars and you see all kinds of shapes, or you look at long books and you see all kinds of messages and, and so on. So they are there because they are there. Because it's like a mathematical, the phenomenon, it's not something designed or something like that. And there's actually a funny story about that because there is some, uh, it's a true story. There is a psychologist who noticed that uh, in a party, every, in a party that's large enough, it's 64, at least three person will either know each other or not know anyone. Don't you know each other? 
22. When did you uh, this level? Uh, okay. Yes. This is awesome. the attribute that like human behavior. Uh, and it's not human behavior. Wow. <laughs> but he actually mails, I mean. Not alone show me like the exchange of mails between like not emails, mail, right? Uh, not Ramsey, I think, but not just someone with your work on this work. He appreciated the fact that this is an uh, invariant of the species we are. Right? Just is. Okay. Uh, anyway, so that's half of the story. But Ernest did, we'll do it in a second, this is also not so difficult. But what Ernest did was to prove that this is like essentially time. He proved that there are graphs, in fact, most graphs are, uh, let's, let me be, you can make it a two, but more or less three log n runs in. Namely, a random graph under uh, the natural distribution, sample the graph of the random, or put an edge uh, either in or out with even half, same thing. So, a random graph uh, will deal with extremely high probability, almost that random. So, if you look at the windows which are six times as large, then they can of possibility resolve, then you will always see at least one edge and at least one non edge. In fact, you'll see. Roughly half the number of things. As it should be. Uh, and this is actually not free, it's like two plus little of one, we'll see that now. And this half and these two, uh, I mean, I don't really care much about this constant, but this half and these two are all kind of stuck like that for 80 years until last year or something, where uh, maybe you got where uh, uh, someone improved, improved the law, uh, which is not now like, I don't know what's like, it's more half plus epsilon for some universal epsilon that's large. It's like more less, but still it's like, uh, it's considered a break for 50 years of my problem, which is the start fundamental. Okay. So how can you prove that? How can you prove that there exists a graph which is free log n Ramsey? Well, the probabilistic method, that was the false instantiation of the probabilistic method. Uh, and what we are going to do again, we are going to think of, not of a graph, like this is what you would do like initially, you try to find a graph, you do it. And that's the wrong way to go. I mean, that's the course. The whole course is about doing that. But that's the wrong way to start. The right way to start is to say, well, let's do be more like, a, a, I don't know, inclusive, consider all graphs together. So you consider all possible graphs. So this is the universe of all possible graphs. So the point is a graph. Okay, this thing is a graph. Does it make sense? Make sense? Yeah, that's a graph. On then vertices, of course. And how many graphs do we have just for fun? Uh, well, and just right because for every edge, no self loops, uh, doesn't care about those things here. Uh, and uh, the graphs are simple, and you have interest to edges, so for each of them, you can choose whether it's there or not. Yes. Uh, right, so the, right, you're right. So these are like labeled graphs, right? You have the vertices one, two, three, and so right, that's that's true. Uh, but let's let's keep it that way. Uh, and then, now well, let's look at the uniform distribution of this set. Right? So sample and graph at random. You can either think of it as something, something uniform at random from this set, or like more locally, but it's the same distribution. For each pair of vertices, decide whether to put an edge or not, you probably one half independently across the edges. Same thing. Uh, so let's let's see. So let's let's fix. I mean, I want to prove that there is a Ramsey graph. And so 
need to be run as a graph, I need to uh, pass certain tests. I, I don't want to be to have a click nor independent set. So I, I'm kind of fixing in my head now uh, a set of vertices, let's call it T. So pick some T of size K. That's the question I care about. And I want to ask, so I'm a, in my head, I'm a graph, but for the proof, I'm looking at I'm just kind of holistically, and I'm asking, you know, what's the probability for our graph from this set right? to fail with respect to this set T? Right? What's the probability that uh, the graph induced on T, when you start the graph at number, is a click set, and then we'll do the independent set case. Okay, so what's the probability that G, let me be kind of Restricted to T is actually actually say exactly what it is. Right. So half for every edge. Right. So the uh, well it's nothing. That's essentially so for this to happen, every of the K choose two vertices in T must be connected. And each of them happens with each event happens with one half and they are independent. So this is the probability for this to be a click. And same for independent set. So the probability, let's let's call it G fails on T. By fails, I mean it's either a click or independent set, is at most twice that, which is essentially the same thing for me. So if you look at this picture, the way I like to think about it is that for every set T. Uh, some of the points here can fail. So let me draw these points. These are the points that fail, like the graphs, right? that fail with respect to T. And you know, if you take another T prime, uh, this may fail. If you take another one, you take a section, and so forth. So for every set, uh, every set kind of rules out a bunch of graphs. But this is the function of graphs that rules out. But you know, how many T's do we have to worry about? And just scale, right? So, like the union bound, just taking the union, union bound, right? Just said the probability of the union of the event is smaller or equal than the sum probabilities of the individual events. Uh, we know that probability the G is not Ramsey, namely, uh, there is a T on which it fails, is at most n choose k. This is just the number of T's that we need to worry about. Number of tests. Times that. Okay, so like graphically, you know. Uh, so why? Right, so G is not Ramsey if it fails on some T. If it fails on T, on... then it is. No, it uh, Ramsey is. has an independent set or cliff. Right. So it is Ramsey. All right, so Ramsey graph it has no click for it. Oh. It depends if you define the Ramsey number or the Ramsey graph. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Right. But that's okay. you figure it the other direction. I know where the confusion is coming from. All right, so this is like the probability that there exists something, there exists a T which is bad. Right. Okay. And you know, what's that? What, what, what's this number, right? So this is the probability that a graph here won't be Ramsey. And, and this is the ingenious part. So if we, if we were to make sure that this is smaller and demanding that, smaller than one, then it means that there is a graph. Right, because this is the probability to fail. The total probability mass is one. So we only need to make sure that K is uh, large enough. I mean, like K is the thing that decays the whole thing. There's also, K also increases uh, this quantity, but it decays it decays faster. Because it's a K squared and a K in the exponent, we'll see. But, uh, but you know, once K is sufficiently large, you can actually check that this holds. Uh, that's just an easy exercise. 
if you don't really care about the exact bound, you can bound this by n to the k. And you can think of it like the, the, the lazy version is that you want this to hold. This is not quite accurate. You have the two here, but that's an overkill anyhow. So essentially the same thing. And then looking at it, uh, okay. you can actually do this. It's, it's just a calculation, it doesn't matter. And then you can uh, take the k food. And then you can see the two log n, right? K is at least two log n because this is the log n. And if you are more accurate, you need the little of one that I told about here. And three is certainly not. Actually, when it is three, most of the graphs are answered. Right? It's not smaller than one, it's like really small. Much more than half, right? It's like exponentially small. If I would ask the, the champ just about things about the determinants. So as I see, the only difference just eliminate right. the GPS of it. Right. But it looks like it would still work, but of course it won't. Because like the empty graph. Ah no, no, but the uh... or the complete graph. So the, the... okay, what sorry, I thought you want if I would ask the yeah. question about independence, just about graphs that have no like, size scale. So, but no, it's first, easier. This works. Okay, it works. And ah, oh, because there is always right. Yeah, the other direction. Right, exactly. Okay. Yes, it's, it's the rounded direction, not the average one. It's like um, it could be like a, it could be like a tighter uh, boundary for the failing. We need just one edge that exists and one edge that does not exist. Right. Good. So we don't know, you're right. So there is like a, it seems like something here is an overkill. Like a, you don't really need two to the minus, you can, you can manage with a lower a quantity here and it doesn't really help. I mean, it doesn't help with the moving the bound, but it does help uh, with, I mean, under with the same price, the full of game of full again, you get a stronger object, which we will call a variant of that we call a two source extractor in, later in the course. Uh, but that that's the only thing you can, you know, you want to take some more mileage out of this thing, and that, that's that's where it goes. Not not in improving the, the, the bound. No, no one knows how to. Improve. More questions? Okay. So let's stick with Ramsey, and then we can ask. Okay. So the probabilistic method, which you know, as a pseudo anonymous, there is a love hate kind of feeling with it because it easily kind of proves the existence of things you care about. Uh, like in the circle, it, like in the second thing, it didn't give us any information about what any which just kind of the reason. And here, uh, the probability method doesn't give you any hint about which graph you should. Uh, so you like it as a pseudo analyst because it tells you kind of how of marks of benchmark. What you maybe you should aim for, the very least you should aim for. But um, it doesn't give you no it gives you no information kind of by design about how to construct whatever construct means. How to construct a graph that has this problem. So as a pseudo analyst, you know it's the dichotomy between how easy it is to use it and then the decades you need to actually construct such a graph is a Heartbreaking. It's really hard. It's so easy. It seems like. Okay, so let's, let's try to construct the graph. Let's see what happens. So Ramsey himself, by the way, wasn't very happy. I mean, I'm sure he was happy. Wasn't very happy about this proof because it's not specific and mathematicians really want to understand such. Why? What makes a graph fancy? And this completely avoids um, essentially the union bound thing. The union bound kind of decouples correlations. Doesn't care what happened between this T and that T. Um, so he actually proposed like a, I think $100 price. It's, it's a, I mean, it doesn't sound a lot, but it's a lot for the ego. Get that money for Ramsey and pay for marriage. Uh, if you do it that, and we are actually quite close to doing that right now, but uh, that's a small. Uh, 
k is out. So can you give me like a easy Ramsey graph construction when k is not full of n, but you know something, not n. Don't give me n. I can do n. Square my square root is quite easy. Probably take it farther, but you know, square root. Yeah, square root. It's not hard. A square root plus one, that would be more precise. Give me a graph that doesn't have a click, no one in the present itself. Size so quote of a plus one. Yeah. 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 I think that's what's also a meaning of things. So then, a square root of n clicks of size square root of an inch, that's a graph of size n. Yeah. Uh, I think that fix. And just by division of things, you can see that I mean, it's kind of obvious that there is no square root of 1 plus 1 kick by design. And by, by division of things, you can see that uh, if you take any square root of n plus 1 uh, with parentheses, two of them must fall within the same thing here, same thing, and they will have an edge. And another way, another, because and another representation of the division of principle, you can show that the uh, and something like that won't happen. They can get clear, so that is not easy. There's, you can actually, everyone discovered that, so at some point, you can actually figure out that this is an overkill right now, because you don't need a click, you need just a good enough Ramsey graph here to make it work. Uh, so you can actually record it. Okay. And that will give you, uh, I don't remember the number, but let me just check for fun. I think log to the base two of five. No, the other way. So you can reverse it to get uh, n to the log to the smaller one. Okay. This thing. One. Uh, that's not interesting. I think that's it. But here's the thing. I mean, the first result that was interesting in this uh, line of work was by. Uh, Nudge. So he said, and that's seriously beautiful. Don't remember the year. Right, right. No, so if you do the recursion correctly, you know, I mean, it's not a trivial to see. Here you get like one half, but now if you use this graph as a fixed, make the original larger, then you can kind of recall get something a little bit better, and then the uh, the trade off we kind of uh, converge to this. You need to, you need to, I mean, it's not obvious, but you can definitely do one step kind of easily, and then you can, if you want, figure out the best choice of the sequence. So, I mean, we're shooting for logic. But now you have a beautiful construction. It's not much better. Actually, he, he constructed uh, n to the one third, so we should trust me that this is better. So uh, uh, into the one fold of the graph, but the, the, the construction is uh, beautiful. And what he did, and he, he, I mean, I won't show it because it's like an hour long proof, nice proof. Uh, he said, well, let's consider the edges, so the vertices of the graphs as a subsets of some ambient set. So I think of the vertices as the subs, this is a notation for all size free subsets of this set. This is just the set one. All, this is all subsets of subsets of one to m size three. You see already kind of introduces structures. You want to analyze it, it's structure. Most of the probabilistic method has no structure in the energy. We want to analyze it. So we need some structure. Here the structure was in fact really good. More refined structure. So look at all this subset. So right, so um, if m is roughly maybe six n to the three thirds or something, but roughly n to the one third, then this is here are n vertices. And the edges. So when, when will you connect two edges? So edges are just subsets, size three, and you will connect them by an edge if the intersection is of size one. 
put your size zero up to two, and if it's size one. This is a, uh, you know, maybe this is an order of n to the one, so there's a six or something, one for the other. What's the value of m? m is, so m is uh, roughly, so you want m to stay to be n, and this is roughly uh, one six. That. So m is like the you know, third square root of six. So you have n in mind, and you kind of design the m, right? So, so you, well, it, it might not work for all m, but you know, you take n, which is of this form, which is this form, and then m is chosen to be roughly this. So m is k. Uh, yes, it turns out that m is k. Yes. And the way I wrote it would be to take k and m are linearly dependent. Not exactly the same, but that is. And that's the first kind of, uh, I think, beautiful construction of, of uh, a Ramsey graph. I won't show the proof. Maybe I'll say it's kind of based on, you consider the adjacent semantics of, of the graph, but over the field of two elements. And uh, then you can fairly use the even and odd uh, nature there. Anyhow, it's, it's smooth. It's not a one step. And before we go to break, let me just say that uh, this is actually an interesting paper. But there is another paper by Frankel and Wilson. All up to that one, it's actually kind of the same thing, same ideas. Walk over. Uh, so the sets are not like, if you take sets of larger size, kind of the same thing. The larger size and the intersection sizes that you allow are not just one element, but a couple, which are chosen carefully. Same same idea, but they were able to obtain K, which is like sub polynomial. Sub polynomial. Not log n, just this thing. I think it's something like two to the square root log n. Yes. And right. And then uh, computer science team, computer scientists enter the picture, which I wouldn't expect it when you put mathematical uh, result. Somehow, uh, somehow, uh, you know, as a community, we did. So at this point, we have k, which is polyomer. So the polyomer that basis. But we know to do the like log n to the fifth, which is like much better than that. And the reason we cared about these things is because of the relation to one of six factors. So, which we'll talk about. But again, this is just a, a bold, uh, I did a view of things. So, but uh, not only we cared about it, and it's not because we cared about it to improve the results, it's because that, uh, from the point of view of us, it was actually, uh, we had more tools that enabled us. Uh, Okay, but let's talk about that uh, after the break. Um, so let me just say a little bit about uh, the Ramsey graph construction that, that we have as computer scientists, because as I said, these are like, so these are constructions, and keep using this word, these are constructions of Ramsey graphs, which are really good, and just pointing on the parameters. Uh, but the thing is, I can't express it, but it's sort of full. It's not like that. Like, this is like a, it's almost like, like you can hear the music, right? Like you have the sets, and, and you know, this is a simple formula that determines where the two vertices are connected. And in the constructions that we have as computer scientists, uh, it, it's not the case. So, what we have is not a formula, but rather uh, an algorithm. It's like, the right thing because you cannot really define form, a formula when you want to say my whatever I'm doing is explicit. When you get into the details, you will eventually land in a complex because you are eventually have to say, and I'm thinking of mathematicians that don't want to say that, but they have to say, Well, I can communicate to you very easily and you can understand what I'm saying and produce it. 
that's complexity theory. Uh, so what we do, uh, so these constructions are algorithms. They are, they are beautiful, but they are complex, okay? Very complex. But the good thing about them is that uh, they are actually given the graph in a very strong sense. So this graph is strong in that sense. Not only I can like, you know, given n, I can give you a Ramsey graph. I can like write down the Ramsey the graph in poly poly time, like poly n time in this case. But actually, we can actually work with like locally. So what really happens is that there is an algorithm. So given n, there is an algorithm that given any two vertices tells you whether to put an edge or not, whether, whether there is an edge or not in the graph. And this algorithm is efficient, the polynomial time. But polynomial time in the input that he got, which are you know, two vertices, namely log n bits. So actually, there is an algorithm that runs in poly log n time, which tells you, you know, which uh, two vertices, which vertices are connected, or any two vertices whether they are connected or not. And you know, certainly you can produce the graph in times. You know, n squared times poly log n, just go over all of that. Uh, so that's a stronger notion, but it's, uh, you know, I must agree, not as elegant as this construction. That was truly elegant. Right? Okay. So I, I kind of philosophized a little bit about that in the notes, but it doesn't really matter. I just kept writing. I feel like I should write it. Just get it out of my system. Because when you go to mathematicians and tell them we constructed the algebra, they say, you know, you call it a construction, and I can't argue with you, like probably. <laughs> but I, you know, it's it's it's, it's not exists. Anyhow, uh, and I'm like half mathematician, half computer science, so I agree with them. But 